So I wanted to do a video because folks want to know, um, you know, what does it take to live in Seattle in terms of affordability and is Seattle the right place for you? So I'm going to talk about that. You know, now we're no longer in Seattle, so I want to put that as a disclaimer. We're actually in Tacoma, uh, and so we have a house here in Tacoma, but pretty much the same, <clears throat> excuse me, the same thing that was uh, going on a year ago is pretty much the same thing going on now. It's even worse. Um, one of the things that people ask is, you know, this is how much money I'm going to make, or can I make it there on minimum wage? It depends. Minimum wage in uh, Seattle is 15 an hour, but it really depends on your circumstances. If you're renting a room or something like that in Seattle, first off, if it's just one person and it's you, let's say it's me, and I come to Seattle and I'm making 15 an hour uh, and I'm renting a room, it's possible, right? Um, it's definitely possible that you are able to do that. Renting an apartment, unless it's a studio, and it's in an older apartment building and you may not be that close to downtown it's still possible but it's very very tough um, not only is it tough financially obviously but it's going to be tough because competition is, is extremely high because everyone's looking for the most affordable place you have a lot of people that move here and they're just single people Seattle's known for being a place where there's a lot of single people and young professionals so you're going to have competition for that you're also going to have uh, a long waiting list so even if you're able to find a place that's affordable it may have 40 or 50 people ahead of you that's on that same list for apartments uh, for that apartment or for others uh, within that building so you may be waiting for a very very long time and of course rents are going to increase every so often so you may afford it today but maybe next year you can or next month you can't it just depends on how things are moving in terms of rental prices the other thing too is most places require that you have to make three times your rent a month so um, that's gonna basically factor in there as well I always help people check Craigslist because you may be able to find a pretty good deal there. A lot of people may have their own personal home or they may have a room that they're not using in their home and you can pretty much kind of uh, lease those out. You may have a little bit better deal, but keep in mind too, a lot of places require. Now there's been some talk about what they wanted to stop uh, landlords from doing in terms of obtaining um, you know, deposits and first and last month's rent and all that stuff combined but um, because they want to try to keep things affordable but you have to keep that in mind all of these things are typically equal the price of the first month's rent when you're talking about a deposit um, and all that has to be paid up front the other thing is is people will say what's the minimum I can live on in Seattle most people who make forty thousand dollars or less are not gonna make it uh, just to be honest with you if you're making 40 grand or less, it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult to get an apartment in Seattle. Let's just take, for example, if you have an, a, an apartment, a one bedroom, and let's say it's $2,100 a month, that's 25, and I'm looking at my calculator because I'm bad at math, that's $25,000 a year. So if you're making $40,000, more than half of your money, and that's before taxes, more than half of your salary is going to go towards making rent. So that gives you an idea and $2,100 is probably about right um, for Seattle. I mean, heck, it's getting close to that here in Tacoma. So you're going to be paying a lot of money. Now, could you find something under $2,100? Sure, but you're still going to be paying a whopper. Um, even if you find something that's, you know, even $1,600, you're paying almost $20,000 a year. Again, if you're making forty grand, half of your money is going to go towards rent. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. It's very difficult here in this city, uh, well, in Seattle, to make it on $40,000 a year. You could probably do much better down in Tacoma. You can do much better in some of these other outlying places. But in Seattle, it's going to be very difficult. Could you do it up in Everett? Sure. Could you do it, uh, you know, in Federal Way? Sure. But again, a lot of those places, rents are starting to climb pretty high. 
So I always tell folks, if you have money saved up, that's great. Uh, you probably will have to, to use quite a bit of that. Uh, the other thing that people will say is that I'm wanting to have this and that much space. The, one of the things that was kind of alarming for us when we first moved here is that homes are very, very small. You know, you will, and apartments are very, very small. We have micro units here that are basically the size of two parking spaces. And that's an apartment, right? Uh, Seattle has kind of done away with that a little bit, but Tacoma allows it. And in fact, there's a couple of buildings going up that are going to have micro units. And so those micro units are still expensive. Like, <laughs> I mean, imagine something a little bit bigger than the man cave here, and you're paying $1,200 a month. I mean, it's, it's expensive. So keep that, those things into perspective when you're thinking about it. And so a lot of folks are used to a house or an apartment that's, you know, 1,200 square feet and, you know, that type of thing not going to happen unless you're going to fork over a lot of money if you have the money to spend sure there's properties here and apartments of various sizes houses of various sizes but if not then it's going to be kind of challenging i would say definitely look at private property owners there's a lot of issues with that because if they're if they're underwater on their mortgage and then that can affect you later on too because i mean if they get foreclosed on then you're out of a home right so those are kind of dicey too but you probably have better luck with people who own a property and they're renting it out than you would if it's a company that has an apartment and they're basically uh renting those uh apartment leases out typically it seems like those are a little bit more expensive uh rents raise every single year because they're able to do that right your pay may not raise every single year, but rents here raise every single year. And with an already tight market, um, it's a challenge, right? So those are things uh, that you want to definitely keep in mind. Uh, I have people all the time that tell me I want a you know three bedroom this and you know a two car garage or a car garage and a you know two bathrooms and. I want to get it for like you know this amount of money and it's just not gonna happen you you really have to look at the prices here to understand uh, what I'm referring to but anyhow hope that gives you some perspective uh, on this if you have any questions make sure you put them in the comment section below and until next time I will see you take care